What's my favorite way to turn myself on? Dancing. Dancing in bra and undies, thousand percent. Just feeling all the juicy vibes. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and women's life coach, where I help women to harness the power of their period and connect back to their true superpowers. In these episodes, we'll be talking about all things periods, vaginas, hormones, women's health, sex, confidence, food, femininity, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't seem to have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are too afraid to say, but everyone is thinking. Good to be back as always, sexy ladies, and I'm so excited to talk about today's episode. I've been getting, this has been a topic that's actually been requested for so long because I dive into this a lot with my clients and I've, I touch on it obviously on Instagram and whatnot and, and you ladies have gotten the gist, but I know that you want more and I'm so excited to give you all the juicy info today. Now, firstly, disclaimer, Peanut is barking in the background. Peanut is my family dog because if you don't know, I'm currently in Melbourne at the moment um, staying with my family. Um, I'm at home for about a month um, because I had my surgery on my leg and make sure you listen to my podcast about post-surgery stuff and before surgery because a lot of you have also asked about that healing journey and that will be the that is the episode I haven't actually recorded it yet but it's going to be the one before this one so go back and listen to that if you're interested in knowing all of the healing processes that I have gone through three times around for this one surgery but it is my it, that was my 11th time in hospital so I am well and truly equipped with um physical ailments we could call them anyway Today, what we're talking about is libido and sex, drum roll, aka the juiciest topic, the best topic, kind of the shit that people don't really want to talk about, but it's totally going to happen and I'm super excited for it. So let's firstly dive in to the the, the pill and libido and how those sort of things work. So in case you don't know, libido is basically your sex drive, okay? And um, basically research has been found that taking the pill for as little as six months could potentially destroy your sex drive forever. As little as six months could potentially destroy your sex drive forever. Ding, ding, ding. Alarm bells going off, people. Because <sighs> that's obviously heartbreaking. But you know what is even more heartbreaking? When young girls are told it's their only option by their doctor, and so they go on it thinking it's their only option, and they haven't even figured out what their sex drive is or what their libido is yet, and it's already destroyed. It's honestly fucking heartbreaking because then they think that them not wanting sex is like normal or them having painful sex is normal or them like complaining to their girlfriends about how much their partner wants sex is normal but it's not normal it's common but it ain't normal you guys know I love that phrase a lot of shit is common but it's not normal if you want that raging sex life babe I'm here to tell you you can get everything that you want just on like a quantum field note like side note, chicken nugget that, um, also I feel like I, I am, I am going to trademark chicken nugget. If I hear anybody else using chicken nugget or crispy chicken nugget or juicy chicken nugget or whatever chicken nugget you want to call it, I will, I will send you a message. I don't want to sound like a bitch, but I, I'm, I'm pretty serious with that. That's my phrase. Um, so what I was saying was, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Quantum field note is that um, anything that you can imagine has already happened, okay? Because everything's like mapped out for you in the quantum field. It's planned. It knows what's happening. You're on your divine path, right? So anything that you can think of, it's because it's already happened and time is an illusion. And that's why I love working with my clients of like bringing down that time, bringing sort of condensing time is exactly what it is. We condense time. We bring down that five-year goal or 10-year goal to one or two years. Um, So yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, Oh, that's where I know where I was going. <laughs> Lol. I know where I was going. I was going at that, that sex life that you dream of, you dream of it because you can have it. So just going to let you marinate in that one. Um, basically the reason why the pill actually reduces your libido is the pill dramatically reduces testosterone and testosterone. It's, it's normally thought of as the male hormone and it is. Um, and when you have too much of it, then you'll, you know, have excess androgens and you don't want obviously too much of it, right? Because then you're going to get more of those male patterns, those male, male features, the, the back knee, the, yeah, the back knee, the, um, the acne, the chest acne, loss of hair, deeper voice, that sort of stuff, male hair patterns. Um, so you don't want too much, but we do need a little bit. And, and testosterone is vital to female and male libido. Yes, females have less of it, but we still need our testosterone and the pill reduces this. 
And the most alarming part is obviously when you come off the pill, it doesn't necessarily reverse the effects. Um, if you guys want to know more about the pill as well, please let me know. I think I should do another podcast episode on like part B of why the pill fucks you up because that has been my most listened to episode. And I feel like it's just opened the eyes to so many women, which makes my heart so fucking warm. So also the pill research has found that the pill, um, it reduces your sexual, sexual enjoyment and libido to the point where you can have a complete loss of interest and arousal arousal. Wow, that was good. Arousal. You can tell that I've been talking all day with clients and you can have muted or non-existent orgasms, decreased frequency of sexual intercourse, decreased intercourse altogether, um, or significant and or I should say significantly more pain. And this has all been reported in studies by women taking the pill compared to those who have never taken it. And I know over and over again, the stories from these women and oh my God, I just have one of my clients. She's just, we're working on, like she's just actually, she just came off the pill um, and she came to me knowing she needed to come off it. And we worked together to um, bring that, bring it like a, there is an art to coming off the hormonal birth control. Um, and we worked together to make sure there wasn't this massive, like jumping off a cliff effect. Right. And when I got her voice message and she had the best sex ever last night. And then this morning she woke up right as she wasn't this morning. It was the other day. She woke up ragingly horny. I was just like, Oh my fucking God. Hell's to the yes. Let's pop champagne bottles. But seriously, like that is actually worth the celebration. And a lot of women, which I'll talk about in a second on the sexual trauma, a lot of women don't celebrate their sexuality or their sensuality. They don't celebrate the orgasmic bliss that we can feel in our body and the power that that has in it. I mean, you know, you just think about it, like whether you've got a penis, a vagina or a bit of both or something else, we're all here on the planet as sexual beings. We all love having orgasms, right? We all love getting to that bliss point. And when you are, I mean, hello, even the food industry has created a fucking bliss point with their whole sugar thing, you know, adding enough salt, enough sugar, enough X, Y, and Z to make sure that it's addictive. So you keep wanting more. And that's that bliss point, right? We all love the bliss point, the bliss point of alignment, the bliss point of orgasm, the bliss point of getting out of your head, feeling in your body, feeling in flow. That bliss point is magnetic. It is fucking electric. And I know you all want it. We all fucking want it. Um, so if you have low libido, I do have a video on my YouTube and I'm just going to go through everything here. Maca powder has been shown to improve libido and to lower anxiety and depression, all of which are symptoms of low estrogen. And low estrogen is what is one of the biggest factors in um, low libido, especially if you've, if you've eliminated the, oh, I'm too stressed, that you have eliminated the fact that you're off the pill, you've eliminated other things like, um, your hand breaks, which I'll talk about in a second, and you've eliminated other things and you're like, what the fuck is it? Where is my libido? Often it's low estrogen. And this can also, this will obviously also be combined with no period or a really, really, really light period. That is low estrogen. So maca powder is really good. I love putting it, putting it in my cacao elixir. Um, I will pop that in the description below. You can find the recipe to it. I love putting that in my cacao elixir. Magnesium is also really good for low estrogen and for boosting your libido because it reduces stress, which thereby supports you um, not having that stress response. Or it also, if you've had a stress day at work, it will respond by you not having a really diminished libido and you not being a cranky fucker. Um, the, 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 I mean, magnesium is really amazing because it does actually, it is needed for over 300 biochemical reactions in your body. Plus it actually blo blocks the stress receptors in your brain. So it will help your brain respond differently to stress than if you were, were magnesium deficient. So magnesium is a really good one. Make sure you go to my favorite products page and you can also shop the magnesium there. Um, another reason why the pill, um, is really bad for your libido and it won't necessarily, um, give your libido back. You won't necessarily get your libido back when you come off the pill is because your androgens, which are your male hormones will increase when you stop the pill. So obviously a small increase is really beneficial for your libido and your mood, but a large increase, like I was saying before, can have that unwanted androgen symptoms of acne, the back knee, the chest acne, the hair loss, the male hair growth patterns, the deepening of the voice, those sort of things. So, um, you don't want that, obviously. 
So magnesium, another reason why magnesium is really good for um, your libido is magnesium makes it harder for your testosterone to bind onto proteins and it allows for more of it to remain free in your bloodstream, which is exactly how you want it to be for a higher sex drive. So higher levels of free testosterone makes for more desire. You don't want to go past past that line where you've got too many, like I've been talking about, but you do want a little bit of a boost of testosterone. That's why typically speaking, women that will around ovulation, they'll get a really big boost in their um, sex drive because one, estrogen. Um, Estrogen increases right before ovulation to its peak, but also because there's a little bit of an increase in testosterone before ovulation. That's another reason why. Um, if you do have low estrogen, um, then having orgasms are the best. They are the best way to boost estradiol. It doesn't matter whether you're having an orgasm with another person. So whether you're having sex, whether you're having an orgasm by yourself, it doesn't matter, but it's going to increase your estradiol. Okay. It's going to lower your cortisol as well. So it's really good. It immediately lowers your cortisol. It helps with that dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, all of those amazing, yummy, delicious hormones. That is what you're after to help balance your hormones and keep you in a more of a rest and digest state. And of course, it's going to help boost your progesterone as well, which is going to help your PMS and anxiety and all that jazz. Because every time progesterone is secreted, it taps into your cortisol. Sorry, 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 sorry. Backwards. Every time cortisol is secreted, it taps into your progesterone stores. Yeah. So in order for you um, to not have depleted progesterone, you need to lower your cortisol so that it doesn't keep tapping into your progesterone stores. Um, of course, if you have high estrogen as well, it will also diminish your libido. So high estrogen, we've already talked about in some of the other episodes, but they're going to come across looking like um, acne, weight gain, um, you know, really bad PMS typically beforehand, bloating, fatigue, water retention, um, stomach cramps, painful periods, heavy periods, all of those sort of things. Um, during your luteal phase, which is the week before your period, you will tend to have a bit of a lower sex drive. And that's where it's nice to know what will turn you on, which I'll talk about in a second, so that your partner can do those things because orgasms in this phase will help you to balance your hormones. And I'll also put the link in the description um, to my Power Up Your Period ebook, um, as well as the Dude's Guide to Period Phases. It basically walks you through your period phases and what you can be feeling like and what the things to help you. So I'd really encourage that you download that freebie um, to give you a little bit of a good idea of like what to expect during different phases of your cycle and how to work with each of these phases so you can truly actually love every different phase of your cycle and allow yourself to go through the beautiful seasons of being a woman and actually experience the different archetypes. I fucking love it. I love it. The weeks that I'm fiery, but I love it. I actually love my luteal phase because one, I get super fucking hungry. So like, it's kind of an excuse to eat more sweet potato. Um, but also secondly, what I really, it actually annoys me at the same time because I get so hungry. It's, and it's not a craving. Remember difference between cravings and hunger. I've mentioned it in past episodes, but it's like pure hunger where I eat and then like a second later, I'm starving again and my stomach's grumbling and I've just drunk a liter of water and I'm like, seriously? Um, Anyway, but what I love about my luteal phase is that I get really cozy and I get cuddly and I get quite soft and people that know me know that I do have a soft side. I really do have a soft side, but it's rare for it to come out. Like it's a really juicy, vulnerable side of me. Um, But I, I'm very high vibe and very like fiery and like, woo, um, all the time. So I love that I get to really tap in and experience and absorb the beauty of my luteal phase. And I encourage you all to just really take the time to sit with each different phase of your cycle and to explore it and to notice how you feel and notice how the shifts occur, but notice the beauty in each phase of your cycle. Okay. Speaking of water, I need a water break. One sec. Okay. <sighs> Love the water. So some other things um, for your libido is you can boost your diet with foods that support your adrenals. Okay. Cause we do not want your adrenals to be firing all the time, or that's going to be secreting all the cortisol, which is going to say, uh, uh-uh, uh, to libido. Because obviously if you're running from a saber toothed tiger and remember that release of cortisol, your brain thinks you're unsafe. It's not exactly the time or place for you to be having sex whilst you're running from a saber toothed tiger, is it? So Orgasms aren't needed, so therefore your cortisol is high as fuck, and your cortisol is going to blunt your sex drive like no one's business. So, foods that support your adrenals 
Um, you, you want to be having like, you know, the sweet potato, those sweet potato and like starchy veg at night, they blunt your cortisol. So that is really important for helping you have a, a, a good night's sleep, for helping your body to relax. Um, cortisol and blood sugar kind of sit on like a seesaw. And when your blood sugar is like when you have some carbs or whatever, and your blood sugar is like spiked a little bit, obviously you want to be eating it with really healthy fats and proteins to help you not feel that spike. But, um, what that does is actually blunts your cortisol. And that's also why when you have like a bulletproof coffee for breakfast or like you don't have any breakfast because you um, haven't eaten yet, your cortisol goes really high, but you get a fuck ton of energy. Um, and of course, you guys know about my intermittent fasting episode. We don't always want to be doing that. Um, and if you haven't listened to that episode, um, let me check what episode it is for you because I really recommend that you go and listen to that episode ASAP. Okay, so it's the episode number six is um, is exercise ruining your hormones. I talk about it in there. And then I also talk about it in Keto vs. Paleo, um, which is episode 12. So I'd recommend that you go listen to that if you haven't already listened to those Just so just episodes. Um, also, you want to need to recharge your energy. Go heavy on like the black and blue and yellow and orange foods. They represent water and earth and Chinese medicine, which is really important qualities for boosting your libido and energy. So blue and black black foods would look like sprouted black beans. Make sure they're sprouted. Black sesame seeds, um, sea vegetables, dark chocolate, obviously 100% dark chocolate, raw cacao. You can make your own chocolate. Again, I've got lit as fuck recipes on my website um, for that and also in my eBooks. Um, for chocolate recipes. So make sure that you go and buy them if you would like to get some hormone friendly recipes. Um, And then the yellow and orange foods, they're going to obviously be looking like carrots, um, oranges. Don't, don't go too high on the, on the, on the fruit though, ladies, because you don't want to be having, you don't want to be ODing on sugar, um, of course. So oranges, but always eating fruit with like some healthy fat. So you don't have that like um, spike. Uh, Sweet potatoes, Love cooking sweet potatoes in coconut oil, cinnamon, and salt. If you haven't done that already, you have not lived. Um, apricot, squash, pumpkin. What else is orange um, and yellow? Uh, that'll be good. Um, those those are some really good foods to help support your adrenals, recharge your energy, and bring you back into that water and earth. Uh, bring you bring bring you back into those water and earth elements with Chinese medicine. Um, so that's sort of the libido piece that's really important in terms of like food and diet and nutrition that you can do to support your sex drive. But what is even bigger than this is actually the mindset stuff. This is why in my work, yes, I have such a big element on like sugar-free, dairy-free, grain-free, gluten-free, no vegetable oil, low in any low inflammatory di- low inflammatory diet, all that stuff. Like that element is um, integral to your overall health, mind, body, and soul. Um, but there is no denying that the mindset piece has a really fucking important part of your period. Like the amount of times clients, you know, they've come to work with me and we've worked a lot on like confidence and being in the feminine and allowing themselves to surrender and being in their body and doing a lot of rewiring, reprogramming, embodiment work, like quantum healing. And, um, we'll do all of that stuff and their period just like fixes itself without us even needing to do anything, right? Because when you start to get really in tune, you know the foods that are right or wrong, that are good or bad for you. Like, you know that sitting down to a bowl of wheat bix with sugar for breakfast is not exactly supportive to your period. And you know that having scrambled eggs and kale, you know, for breakfast would be way better for you, for your mind, body, and soul, okay? Because that's coming from a place of love. Like, you're always eating from a place of love. And yes, people can go, oh, like, you shouldn't label foods good and bad. Let's just cut to reality. There is good and bad foods. But what's more important that I believe is that you want to be eating from a place of love. So it's not about whether it's, is it good or bad. It's actually about are you eating from love or fear? Because even if you're eating healthy food from a place of fear, it's still not good for you, is it? But if you're eating a place of chocolate, cake from a place of love, well, that'd be different. But on a deeper level, if you really truly loved yourself, you wouldn't want to feel like crap. Okay. And you really love your body and want to look after it. So you might be wanting a piece of chocolate cake, but you'd make a sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free chocolate cake that you can indulge in based out of love, but it's not making you feel shit. I hope you can see how there's a difference there, love or fear. Um, but yeah, the most important part of a whole like sex stuff um, and like sex drive and libido and sexual healing aspect, and I'm going to do lots more on this. Um, oh, I was going to give you a hint to something. There is something exciting coming, but I'm not going to give you a hint because, well, there is a hint, isn't there? 
Okay, I'm just gonna stop. Okay, so um, <laughs> so the most important thing for your libido is that you cannot be expecting yourself to be turned on in bed if you are not turned on in life. Really important. First step is that you need to be turned on by doing fucking Pilates, by dancing in front of the mirror naked. If you can't turn yourself on, why can you? Why are you expecting somebody else to turn you on? And and you can't expect like we are all responsible for our own pleasure, okay? Um, so obviously the first step is going to be like sexual trauma and getting rid of it. So we need to repattern your mind and spirit for new ways of thriving. We need to figure out what old habits that you have formed need to fuck right off, and what old philosophy do you have in your mind and body? Remember, trauma, and I've done a live on this, but I'm sorry doing another one. Trauma, and I'm just gonna. Actually, I'm going to start doing my Facebook lives. Make sure you've added me on Facebook, my personal profile if you haven't already, and also my business one. Um, but I'm going to start doing, because Facebook's fucking up, um, Instagram's fucking up lately with its lives. I'm going to start doing some lives and recording them for a podcast so you guys can listen to them like on a walk later on because every time you listen to something again and again, your brain remembers and picks up new things because your, your brain is only going to remember and listen to the stuff that you need to hear at that moment. But because we're always developing and up-leveling, yeah, it's like a week later and you watch it again, your brain has developed and you've up-leveled, so you're ready to hear new things from the same conversation. So um, I'm going to start doing that. But yeah, so the sexual trauma. So repatting your mind. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. That trauma is stored in your body and trauma doesn't need to be rape or murder. What trauma is, is it's energy that's stuck in your body that needs to be shifted. And every time you're triggered, okay, the same your body reacts and your brain reacts as though the same violation is happening again and again when it's not. That is trauma. So trauma can be as simple as your mom saying no once. Trauma can be as simple as you being embarrassed at school when you were five years old on stage. Trauma doesn't need to be a huge thing, but it's stuck energy in your body that's blocking you from being able to step into alignment. Um, so getting rid of that, obviously. Um, and then also you need to ask yourself, where are you consistent? Where are you consistently draining yourself? Then we need to do forgiveness practices. And man, oh man, are my forgiveness practices fucking juicy shit. I actually just was on my mastermind page and um, one of the girls was like, I just did that forgiveness exercise and fuck me dead. That was intense. One of the other girls actually said to me, I need to post it in my Instagram story. She posted on the wall, on the Facebook. She was like, there needs to be a disclosure of how deep those one-on-ones goes and how epically intense they are. And I was like, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, all the juicy nuggets from Monica. Um, and then I, after you've done the forgiveness work, you can do it, but then you need to be able to ask yourself, have I forgiven myself? Because a lot of the time with sexual trauma, especially for women, is we blame ourselves for it. It was our fault. I was drunk. I was stupid. Um, you know, um, I I thought I wanted it. Um, I didn't want to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. And then we blame ourselves. Oh, I was asking for it, right? We blame ourselves. No, 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 no. We don't blame ourselves. So it's much like when we're doing child's work, we're not blaming our mother or healing parent wounds. We're not blaming our parents, okay? But you have to forgive yourself. So asking yourself, have I forgiven myself? And this can be in every area of your, of your life. So drop in, you can do a meditation and ask yourself, can you forgive or can I forgive myself? Um, yeah, I'm just going to sit with that for a second. I feel like that was really, really deep. Um, the next thing that's really important is knowing your turn on and turn offs. So how can you find more enjoyment in everyday things? So, you know, this is where it starts, right? Because like I said, you need to have a turn on life to be turned on in bed. So first of all, knowing your turn on and turn offs is really important, but you need to be turned on before you, in your life before you can be turned on by somebody else, right? So perhaps instead of hating the fact that you have to work tonight and feeling angry about it, you could light some candles, you could you know, get a glass of wine if that tickles your fancy, you could play some music, you could put your yoni egg in. Oh, I love my yoni egg. You could, um, you know, have some crystals around, you could put some music on, you could wear a sexy outfit, you could put your banging earrings on, some heels, whatever makes you feel sexy and like there's more pleasure involved in the activity. That is key. 
Um, and every time then that you experience pleasure in your day, your sex related neurochemicals in your brain are affected some way. That serotonin, that dopamine, that um, all of those happy hormones that are released happen because you've added more pleasure and pleasure doesn't need to be, um, be, be coming from orgasm. Pleasure can be coming from having a cup of tea or reading your book. You need to find pleasure in the little everyday things. And then of course, whenever you feel close to somebody, you experience an oxytocin surge. What about when you feel close to yourself? Oh, that's juicy, right? That's juicy. What about when you feel close to yourself? I love it when I just talk and like shit just comes and I'm like, fuck Monica, I need to go back. I need to actually go back and listen to my podcast because I feel like I need to take notes out of my own podcast. Anyway, talking about little things that turn you on, food is one of the best ways to get you turned on because it involves the use of all of your five senses. So you're seeing the food, you're smelling the food, you're tasting the food, you're touching the food. You are allowing yourself, oh, I have goosebumps as I say that. Oh, juicy. It allows you to really start experimenting with your everyday libido and it allows you to feel turned on in life and by other things. You must, 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 ladies, I cannot reiterate it enough, be able to turn yourself on and not always expect your boyfriend or girlfriend to do it for you. If you cannot turn yourself on, how can you turn others on? And like I was saying before with my yoni egg, That's one of my favorite ways, not favorite, but like it's definitely high up on the list. What's my favorite way to turn myself on? Dancing. Dancing in bra and undies, thousand percent, just feeling all the juicy vibes. And getting a little bit of like sweat on, like that that glow. Oh, I love that. Um, Okay, what was I saying? Yoni eggs. So I've got mine right here. I'm actually holding it. Yoni eggs are awesome, okay, because they really allow you to connect to that space that we don't have much connection with at all. Like, it's funny how we can, like, put the time and, and energy into putting the makeup on our face, but we can't do it with our yoni, which is just, like, not okay, right? Because pretty sure our yoni holds, like, double the amount of power and innate wisdom than our face. Like, our face is great for, like, showing expression and for looking pretty, but, like, our yoni is, like, a whole different kettle of fish. Um... Or a whole different kettle of yonis. Who knows? Um, so what a yoni egg is, it's a small like egg-shaped crystal that you put into your yoni. And don't freak out. Um, it's small. Like it's not that big. And if you put a tampon in, you can put a yoni egg in. It can be quite hard to activate your vagina wall muscles. So hence this and, and therefore then can create that brain body connection, right? And I'm experiencing this right now with my leg. So right now I'm learning how to pick my leg up when I walk and, and sort of pull like this is going to make no sense if you don't know what I'm talking about because like this is, this is just like a subconscious thing that people do and like your brain, your body just does it without even thinking. But when you walk, you pull your heel like up to your glute. Like that's how your muscles sort of work, right? And I'm having to rewire my brain for that because I haven't been able to do that for over a year um, because I had all this metal in my leg and it was stopping my hamstring from turning on because of pain and X, Y, and Z, whatever. So I am experiencing firsthand how you have to rewire your brain to these areas of your body because it completely disconnects. It shuts down when there's too much pain associated with that. It shuts down and it stops working because you stop sending the energy and you stop using it essentially. Um, so it can be really hard to activate your yoni muscles when you shut them down for so long. I haven't used them. So hence the egg is perfect for you and it allows your brain to really venture into those areas that it might not have the practice with. Um, it does allow you, of course, to have a much greater appreciation for your womb and femininity. Like it's magic. It's like when you, when you like, you can almost like hover your yoni egg, like just at the entrance to your vagina and your body is like, hell's yes or no. Like it's never actually said no to me, but um, <laughs> lol. But it's just like, it just like grabs it and wants to absorb it. It's like, yes, fucking please. It just loves the energy and the feeling of that. So every single woman can use a yoni egg to help her heal from shame, help her heal from discomfort in this space. And it really does allow you, this is the biggest thing for me, it allows you to honor yourself. It allows you to honor this space and actually take the time to connect with this space in your body. It allows you to honor all the versions of yourself. So it will allow you to feel and honor this part of your body. 
And when women begin to think about their womb space and really start honoring this, so many magical things happen. They're able to tap into their intuition and discover that world of possibilities that sits in their womb space. They are able to do womb healing work. They're able to tap in to their innate wisdom. Um, you know, it makes their life easier and more in flow and brings us into alignment. And of course, we will be doing a shit ton of work at our retreat about this. Um, and I obviously do a fuck ton of womb work with my clients. It's honestly one of my favorite things because it's so magical for you, for you to feel that space, not for me to tell you about it. I can tell you crap and like, it doesn't matter. It's, I want you and you, your womb wants you to actually be able to feel her. And like, there's nothing better than when a client we're sitting in like a deep trance state and we're doing some work and a client all of this stuff just bubbles up, this beautiful, these beautiful words and phrases bubble up for her and she speaks them with her eyes closed and it's like, I didn't say that, that was her. Like that, that is you inside. There's that piece of you inside that is like, I want to allow myself to speak my truth that I am beautiful, that I am loved, that I am sexy, that I can ask for what I want, that I am honored, that I am divine, that I am the feminine, that I am juicy. Like all of those things are within you. But you've got to be able to say yes to yourself to actually uncover that. And like the bottom line is, it's not about money or investing. Like you obviously have to do that, but it's actually the energetic shift. It's actually that hardest part is saying yes to yourself because when you say yes to yourself, you're actually saying yes to the healing. And for so long, you've been closed off because of ego Um, and it can be scary. But as soon as you say yes, it's like all the healing starts to happen. Like as soon as you say yes to yourself, you've already gone up like 50 levels with your energy and like you've already had an up level and an energetic shift. And that's where like so much of the magic happens. So the Yoni egg also allows you to become friends with the um, erotic version of yourself and tap into what she wants. Oh, fuck. It's so juicy. So it's best to journal out your desires and really sit with them so you can get comfortable with the idea of them and sit with your yoni egg. And and because so many are so much so many of us are ashamed of these thoughts. But what I love getting clients to do is to actually explore them, sit with them, visualize them, feel them, so they can start to get comfortable with them. Because what happens is, and the same with like money, love, business relationships, is if something seems so far fetched your brain will be like, oh yeah, cool. Like I can make a million bucks, but like it won't actually think it's possible. So you're not going to be able to get it. Your body has to feel it in order for you to attract it. And that's where you make time condensed because you become the match for that thing. Um, and of course society has really twisted. Like when you have a yoni egg and just like anything, I, I really want you ladies to be able to start. And I'm doing a lot of work with this with my current clients right now. What's the date today? It's the 11th of April. So currently I'm doing a lot of work with my clients around this. This like, it's been really like last week and this week and probably next week. Um, a lot of work around allowing that like sexy, erotic, slut version of themselves to come into full fruition and to come play. And um, unfortunately, society has made a, the definition of slut to mean bad and they, they make it, you know, this is, there's a sort of definition of slut means you're a bad woman. When that's not actually the definition. The definition is a woman who has many casual sex partners. Does that make her a bad woman? No. Can you see how we have this like program belief? And I'm sure you do this program belief of like slut is bad, slut is gross, slut is shameful, slut is dirty. Oh, well, I like a little bit of dirty one. Um, instead of actually going, well, that's actually not slut. That's actually not. That's false. The word, the word slut actually means um, casu- uh, many, a woman that has many casual, sexual par- many casual sexual partners, right? That does not make her a bad woman. That makes her somebody that is a sexual being and likes to have sex. You can't then be like, oh, she's a bad woman. Like, no, that's absolutely not the case. Um, so like even you can think of examples in other ways, right? Like what makes somebody a bad woman? So what makes somebody like maybe a quote unquote bad person is that they like stole for somebody. They did something really mean because they're being a bitch. But, you know, does somebody speaking up for their truth or speaking up for what they want or going after what they want, does that make them a bad woman? No, that makes them a woman 
that wants to feel good in her body, in her soul, in her spirituality, in her emotional life, right? Because she's going after what she wants because she's not afraid. That is an awesome fucking woman. Um, and in terms of like um, sexual energy and stuff and orgasm, we have a negative and positive pole in our body as women. So overall, a woman is um, a negative charge and receptive, but within herself, her receptive nature, the vagina, which receives a man physically, is the negative pole. The opposite pole, the male pole, exists in the breast and hearts, okay? So all the male attributes um, and qualities such as um, young, sun, and young is pronounced young, not yang. Um, sun, active, dynamic, um, passionate, all those, they apply to the positive pole, the breasts and heart of a woman. So from here, from your heart, you're able to radiate and be receptive and expand and be open and share and reach out into the world, right? And this is why I love tying the sexuality work and the sensuality work with business because you need to have an open heart and be able to be activated so that you can be open, radiate and expand and reach out into the world so you can actually put your work into the world and then receive. However, through the vagina, she welcomes, she, um, she does more receiving, she absorbs and she relaxes. So women as... Um, Women as passive aspect represent the negative pole, yet within herself, she carries the positive. And between the two poles, so you've got positive at the heart, negative at the vagina, between those two poles is going to be this flow of energy. And this channel is what is called electromagnetic energy. So between the positive and negative, there is basically this movement of um, electromagnetic energy that streams and spirals and moves around and that becomes your source of orgasmic experience. And that's why dancing and body work and embodiment stuff is really effing powerful because this is the ultimate source of orgasm experiences and it, it helps us see that orgasm lies within, not outside. You can't get an orgasm from something external. Your orgasm comes from internal. Your you're from um, the inside. Your pleasure comes from the inside. And reaching that state of bliss that I was talking about towards the beginning, it only requires three essential elements. You know, you've got agelessness, agelessness, naturalness, and timelessness. Okay, so in reality, then the other person is not involved in your ecstasy. In sex, yes, we engage with another person, but having the source of orgasmic energy triggered is yes, by the other person, but ultimately the state is experienced as our own. Does that make sense? So yes, in sex, you are having um, an experience with, with another person and obviously the source of orgasmic energy is triggered by them, yet ultimately the state of orgasm and pleasure is experienced as your own. And it's not always mutually exp mutual experiences of two things happening at the same time. It can be but not always, right? Because it comes from within. So that was like a lot that just came out of my mouth. That was, yeah. Um, so the point being is when you can learn how to nourish your or your romance with your own body and date yourself to ignite that pleasure and orgasm from within and to allow all of your senses to come, become alive. You allow your um, femininity to become alive. You allow your sexual energy to become alive from those positive and negative poles and allow that flow effect of that electromagnetic energy. Then you exude a breathtaking breathtaking feminine confidence quality that transforms the atmosphere around you. That, that ladies, is what becomes the version of you and that energy where, you know, when someone walks into a room and they're just beaming and glowing and you know how so many of you want that, you want to be the woman in the, the room where the confidence comes from just like inside of you and it just like beams out, right? This comes from within. It's not an external thing, right? External is focusing on ego. External is focusing on matter and you need to go through everything. You need to go, go through the childhood wounding, the reprogramming, the embodiment stuff, the parent wounds, the um, anger exercises, the, all of that shit, the quantum healing, all of the stuff that I take my client through, it's there for a purpose because you need to go through that so you can clear your shit, clear your blocks so that you can bring in the good, bring in the pleasure, experience that wholly without your ego and then move through life. And sadly, a lot of women these days don't have much information on how to accomplish such, accomplish such transformations and such pleasure, hence 
and to me. Um, and of course, out of disappointment and frustration, many women are rejecting sex altogether or in some way, shape or form, trusting that their love of like children or their job or like whatever is going to be enough. But in doing this, in doing this and putting your, your, your own pleasure below other things, you are denying yourself of the ultimate part of being a woman. So often a woman will then start to feel like a longing for her when you're an older woman, her grandchildren or her children if you're younger, so she can feel that love flowing within her again, okay? Um, but orgasm is a state of energy and and you have to, you don't have to, of course, but like I invite you to do the work properly once and for all because it is an energetic state where you are free of ego and no longer feel like matter you vibrate like energy electricity and you are vibrating so fucking deeply from the very bloody foundation of your onion core that you completely forget that you're a material thing and that's what we're always getting to we can get to that by um, quantum physics but also getting you to that orgasmic bliss state that's what that is and that's why with my stuff it's like we're getting you all to that we're getting you to that pure orgasmic state even this morning with the client we were doing something and she was like, that was fucking orgasmic. She's like, that was a full body orgasm. And we weren't fucking like, she wasn't getting off or anything. We were doing something about visualization and quantum field and, and, and time condens- um, condensing time. But that, but getting to the bliss point meant in that moment, there's no ego. And then it's faster. Then you can bring it faster because you're at a higher vibrational frequency. And that's where all of this stuff, especially for a woman, that's where I like to combine. I love actually, not like, I fucking love combining all of this shit together because then it becomes utter fucking magic 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 and it happens fast it's not working on this for like five years it's it's a it's a fast ingrained transformation that's in your body right and that's what's important a lot of people can do the work in their head but if you haven't done it in your body it's not going to shift because we hold the trauma we hold the stuck blocks we hold the energy and our trauma and the pleasure comes from our body not from our head Hey, head is ego, head is masculine, body is feminine, body body is energy and flow. Um, So yeah, when we're we're not in orgasm and we're more in this this lower vibrational frequency of like matter, that's where you've got um, your ego, right? And that's where you've got the limiting beliefs. And that's where you'll have trouble with allowing yourself to be turned on and feel sensual and feel orgasmic and all that stuff because you've got limiting beliefs, whether it's around sex isn't safe, he's going to take advantage of me, I'm not good enough, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm not good, I'm not, I'm not pleasuring him enough, I'm not feeling pleasure, oh my god, why can't I, why can't I orgasm, in all those states, right, you've got that limiting belief, so all those limiting beliefs, that's why it's really important that we, like, that you can do the work and get to that state beforehand, um, and get into that quantum healing, um, and doing those shifts so that you can actually feel that and integrate that into your body. So ladies, I've already recorded 42 minutes of this podcast, Hells to the Yes. I don't want to just ramble and it just goes on forever. I'm like, hells yeah. Um, so I'm going to do another episode that will be after this one about turns on and turns off. I know that I turn turn offs. I know that I mentioned it and I was like, I'll talk about it in a second, but it's quite a bit that I want to unpack around understanding your turn on and turn offs. Um, and I want that to be able to be like quite educational and useful material for you ladies. So I'll do another one on that and I'll leave this one here. But what I do want to mention is that um, before you go, if this is juicy as fuck to you and you're like, I, I need, I need, I fucking need, my womb is like, give me more of this. I'm going to drop a hint. So I've already dropped a hint that there is a hint to something exciting. Um, I want you to, if you're like, yeah, I need this, there's a link in the description um, and just tro- pop your, like click the link for the surprise. Like for, I'll say like, I'll say click the link for the hint or something like that. Click that link, put your email in um, because then I'm going to, I'll send you an email when this exciting thing is here. So you don't miss out because it will be intimate, very private, X, Y, Z, all the juicy shit that Monica delivers to her fucking epic clients um, and peeps so and sexy ladies. So if you do feel like there's something about this that I want and you will have a little niggle, follow that niggle. All you do is drop in your email. You're not dropping your credit card. Um, and then you'll know when it's released and uh, like the thing that I'm doing is out. Um, and then also um, make sure that you're on my Instagram and whatnot because then you'll obviously know when new things come out. Um, so you can dive into this deep, transformational, sustainable, lifelong work. The thing is, I don't do short, quick fixes. We are talking about embodied, ingrained, deep fucking changes in a, on a cellular, cellular level. Um, so if you want that, then you know where to come get the goods. Um 
And yeah, I don't do quick fixes. I'm like, get this shit done, do the work so you can have the best fucking dream life in your business, in your life, in your sex, in your health, in your period, in your femininity, in your relationships, in your exercise, in your food, in fucking your crystals. Oh, don't fuck your crystals. Actually, you can have crystal ones. And then I guess technically you could fuck your crystals. That was so random. I was just looking at my crystals and then I said fucking beforehand and that just totally went way out of track. Anyway, whatevs. I feel like I need to just shut the fuck up and leave this here because I've been talking all day today. Um, so have an amazing, amazing day and I will talk to you all so much later. Make sure you send me any suggestions because I love your suggestions. They tell me what I need to talk about and then I deliver you guys the crispy chicken nuggets. Bye. Well, thank you again for tuning in and listening to my podcast. I hope that you got lots of nuggets out of today's show. Uh, please, 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 I would be really grateful if you could leave me a review so that more women can find the podcast and therefore I can help more women understand their period and fix their period problems. Because after all, it's a much nicer life to live when we actually love our cycle because we do have to um, keep up with it every single month. Also, if you have any friends or loved ones that you think would enjoy my podcast, I'd be super grateful if you could send it to them as well just to share the love. And that's it for now. So I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.